Hey guys, welcome back to the Calibrate Tools channel. Now you may be a professional woodworker, contractor, or even a do-it-yourself enthusiast on the weekends, like me, right? But if you work with wood, there's a little tool that you may want to know about. It's called a moisture meter. Now, what is that? Well, hey, we'll find out right after this. <music> When we look at a piece of wood, most of us take it for granted, right? It comes from trees and we use it to build things. But if we examine wood a little closer, we'll find that it has some very interesting properties, such as the fact that it absorbs moisture from its surroundings and it releases moisture as well back into its environment. That's a very interesting fact that I did not know about wood and we're gonna learn more about in a minute. So wood, is what's called a hygroscopic material, which is just a big word to describe what we just mentioned. It absorbs moisture, but we also mentioned that it releases moisture. Well, what can we conclude from that? When it absorbs moisture, it expands, and when it releases moisture, it shrinks. And that can be a big problem if you're working with wood. Now, how much does wood expand or shrink? Well, you may have figured out that depends on the amount of moisture the wood interacts with. You know, the amount of moisture that the wood absorbs or releases at any given time. Now, it's said that wood expands or shrinks about 1% across the grain for every 4% change in moisture content, and it doesn't expand or shrink much at all along the grain. These small percentages may not seem like a lot, but when it comes to precision in building or construction, they sure matter a lot. When the math is off, everything's off. When the dimensions of wood or lumber shifts or changes because of moisture, that could spell disaster. Okay, so what do you do to avoid such a disaster, right? What do you do to avoid your wood project ending up misshapen or falling apart because of moisture? Well, you want your wood to reach what's called its EMC, or Equilibrium Moisture Content. EMC is the point where the wood is no longer absorbing or releasing moisture into the environment. At that point, it's said to be at an equilibrium or in balance with its surroundings. One of the ways to do that before construction or building is to store your lumber or wood in a cool, dry area and make sure that it's about four inches off the ground and covered with a tarp in case of rain. But let's just say you arrive on the construction site or you're about to start that project and you don't know if that pile of wood you're about to get started with has reached its EMC, then you might want to pull out your moisture meter. Okay guys, so we have a moisture meter in front of us and uh, this one is a pin type moisture meter uh, for wood. Now they have several types of moisture meters out there on the market for different applications and you can do your research on those, but we're going to talk about the moisture meters for wood today. And uh, this one, like I said, is pretty simple. It has one LCD screen for the readings. It has a power button, it has a mode button, and it has a hole button, okay? This also uh, is battery operated. It has a nine volt battery that goes into the bottom here. So let me just show you guys. That's a nine volt battery. Let's slip it in there. And you know, you just turn it on right here, like that. See it light up, and you have these pins. Like I said, it's a pin type, and they're covered by these plastic protective covers. Let's take those off to show you the pins. By the way, these things are pretty sharp, so you don't want to get stuck with these, so be very careful. Now, they also have pinless moisture meters as well. Now, the difference between a pin type moisture meter and a pinless moisture meter is that a pin type moisture meter is more accurate at gauging the depth of the moisture in a piece of wood or material than a pinless moisture meter. A pinless moisture meter is better at uh, scanning large areas of an object or piece of wood and getting a reading that way. Needless to say, a pinless moisture meter does not have to touch or contact the material or wood that it's getting a reading from. It can simply be held above the surface of that material and get a reading. Okay, so what's considered a good reading for wood on a moisture meter? Well, you could break it down into low, moderate, and uh, say high or saturated, right? So the low end would be around five to 12%. Uh, the moderate would be around 12 to about 17%. And above 17% is 
is considered, you know, high or saturated, right? Which is not that good. Now, if you're talking about a building or a structure made of wood or lumber, as opposed to a freestanding pile of wood sitting on a construction site somewhere, uh, the acceptable reading for the interior of that building uh, should be around six to eight percent, and the exterior of that building should be around nine to fourteen percent as, as an acceptable range or reading. Okay, guys. So we're in the lab right now, and we're gonna experiment with our moisture meter on a couple of pieces of wood that I have here, right? So one thing to note is that you wanna know what kind of wood you're gonna be testing or getting a reading from, okay? That's also known as knowing what species of wood that you have before you, right? So this particular piece of wood right here is a uh, Douglas fir uh, piece of wood. Then I got some, uh, I got some poplar. All right, here's another piece of poplar here and I got some you know miscellaneous pieces of wood as well all right I don't necessarily know what type they are but we'll test them okay just to test them right the first thing we want to do is uh, take our moisture meter and uh, turn it on and as you can see it's set to wood and we're gonna leave it there because that's all we're testing today is wood but if you press the mode button it switches from wood to building, you know, if you're testing in a building, uh, I suppose, and then you can switch it back to wood. And we're gonna leave it on wood. And we simply take the pins and we apply pressure to our wood. Okay, so. Well, look at that. We got about 17%. That's kind of high. Let's try some more wood. Let's try the poplar. Nineteen percent, eighteen percent, ten point six percent. Well, that looks like it falls within the decent or good range as far as moisture content levels. Let's try the poplar. Hmm, around 13, Okay, guys, I just wanted to give you a close-up of the device in action, okay? As you see, right up under the LCD screen with the readings, you have a gauge, right? It says dry on the left and wet all the way to the right. And as you see, you have green lights on the left, right? Indicating that it's dry, right? But just for the sake of illustration, I'm going to dampen the wood a little bit. Hold on a second. So, all the way to the right, not all the way, but almost there, you see a red light. And that's indicating that it's very saturated. It's in the wet side of things, okay? So that's great about this moisture meter. Uh, you know, it's very ergonomic and it has a great light show. Now, another important thing to know about moisture meters is that before you do any testing, you want to make sure the moisture meter itself is accurate and calibrated. Now, there are a couple of ways to calibrate a moisture meter. One of the ways is that sometimes moisture meters are themselves internally calibrated, or you can use an external device called an MCS, a moisture content standard, to test or calibrate your moisture meter as well. So if you don't want that woodworking project to end up warped or misshapen, 
or let's just say you're working on a customer's home, for instance. You don't want to mess that up. You want to make sure you use something like a moisture meter to make sure that you get all your dimensions right. And remember, a rule of thumb, as humidity increases, wood expands. If humidity decreases, wood shrinks, okay? So one of the best ways to check that is with a moisture meter. Bet you guys didn't know that they have moisture meters for drywall and concrete too, but that's another video. Just make sure that if you're installing hardwood floors, that you make sure that you got your MC levels right. What's that? Your moisture content levels. Hey, one more thing. Moisture meters are also great when testing for water damage and mold. Hey guys, if you learned something today about moisture meters, crush that like and subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next video.